Dr. Cleary. Quota. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. As I remember, you were president in 2004. Yeah. Tell us a little about that year and the challenges you faced. Well, the year was pretty exciting all round, and I'll even go back to 2003. We were in an opportunity that the Project of Death in America was uh, moving out of supporting um, efforts in the United States. And sort of as their closing gesture, they were um, looking at um, giving significant money to the Academy. So the end of 2003, just before I became president, was significant time writing a grant. And we got a significant amount of money, close to $700,000, to as a three-year grant to actually do a number of things. One of them was to buy out some of the president's time from their institutional practice. The other was to hire a uh, physician leader within the academy. And um, one of the highlights, and I can say one of the things looking forward, was interviewing you as you were actually walking the, uh, the, the mountains of the west, and you stopped somewhere around um, Lake Tahoe for me to conduct an interview of Porter's story to see if he would be uh, suitable. So, but I, um, it's a classic story that goes with you and the Academy, but it really highlights that that was a shift. We now had physician leadership mm. with other, who was a constant, um, together with um, uh, the leadership from the staff mm. and as well as a rotating presidency. So it really, I think, strengthened things. Um, so the project in Death in America, I think, was absolutely critical to us moving forward. It was also in that year that we went forward and met with ABMS, and we went to meetings in Philadelphia, so that was quite an exciting time, as we, we didn't get the certification that year, but those meetings were ongoing. Um, so really, overall, a very, very exciting, and I look back uh, rather proudly on that time and say, hey, things really improved. Um, the numbers, and I even look today at the, um, the attendance of the meeting since 2004 has actually doubled in that time. I think it was 1,400 in 2004, um, held in the, uh, the Hilton Hotel here in New Orleans in 2004. Now we have twice the membership or in the convention center. Wow. So the hotel itself can't actually uh, hold us. So it's really been, the membership has just soared. Um, there were some interesting times too, and uh, I think there were still some um, challenges. Others have talked about the naming. Um, Laurel has talked about the naming, keeping the palliative medicine. And I think at the time with the whole issue of board certification, would we be called, the, be called uh, palliative medicine dropping the hospice? And this came up with the whole issue of hospice was a side of practicing palliative medicine and the parallel example that time was emergency medicine. Mm -hmm. It wasn't called emergency room medicine, mm -hmm. it was called emergency medicine. Would we be called palliative medicine? And that same tension, I think, that Laurel talked about as having been there resurfaced. And I think there was, were the people who were primarily based in the university settings beginning to take over the academy? What about the hospital s settings? So that was ongoing, but I think one of the things that really sort of um, started to grow out of that was a reunification with the board certification name being hospice and palliative medicine. It was a reunification that's just been perpetual growth since then. It's been fascinating to see the um, medical director certification come up. That was discussed at that time and it was quite a strong discussion whether we should be doing it but the advice at that time was not to because it would have confused our ABMS if in fact we'd had two or, th or two certifications going through at the mm -hmm. same time. So we held back and I think it's been wonderful to see that come forward now. From your perspective, what are, what's the Academy's opportunities and challenges going forward? Opportunities and challenges. I think the opportunity is, is that as, as healthcare changes in the United States, that there is a real role for palliative care. Um, and it's not just, and I, I'm using that broad concept of palliative care, and in my language I talk about hospice-based palliative care, hospital-based nursing home, but increasingly we're seeing this emphasis on palliative care. So I think that we stand to play a huge role in healthcare as it goes forward. Um, 
the recent uh, Brill article in Time magazine, The Bitter Pill, really raises the question about the appropriateness of healthcare spending. It's not death panels. Um, not only why are we spending, but why are we spending so much? Beautiful piece. And I think part of that answer is if you inform patients, um, many of them may make the decision not to proceed with expensive therapies that don't really meet the patient's needs. Um, so I think we're going to see a huge change in that regard. The Academy's challenge is going to be keeping up with these changes. Um, how do we grow and continue to grow? I think it's very well situated with the staff. You still self in this position, the, the presidents. A huge change, and this came about with a change in staffing and um, the staffing leadership was really to move to the communities. And that happened when we changed um, executive directors and really made a significant difference to this this real let get community and involve everyone. We tend, I think, to become, become a little too narrow. Mm. Um, let's be really efficient. We really need to be very broad and expansive to engage the membership. So I think that's both an opportunity and a challenge. Um, do you spread yourselves too thin? But how do you keep all people engaged? Yeah. It's definitely looking forward. What characteristics do you think our future leaders are going to need to be effective? Um, patience, mm. um, insight, listening skills. Um, I think the biggest thing, and I think watching the um, younger generation of physicians come through, is that, um, and I'm reading Zef. Um, Gooden's book on tribes. And I think that when they talk of leadership there, it is the ability to actually um, uh, to lead and not just manage. Mm -hmm. And particularly with the use of social media amongst um, many of us now, these innovative ideas that are, come, are going to come out and disrupt are not just going to be from the board. And it's really the creativeness of an individual as president the leadership to actually hear all those things and to be able to guide that through because I think that voice is going to become stronger and stronger and that's really going to be the, the challenge as we sort of look at the relationship between the membership, the communities and uh, the board. But I think that the environment is set up to handle that. I think the environment that's being created by the Academy will handle this new disruption that comes from the membership. Wow. Sounds like interesting times. It is. Anything else you'd like to add? No, not at this stage, Gordon. Thank you so much for your past and continuing leadership. Thank you very much. Really appreciate Thanks, it.